chains are operating smoothly again. With this agreement, they're being uh, paid what they deserve, and goods are moving quickly and efficiently across the country. Plus, this has a direct impact on redu reducing inflation. When the cost of moving goods through supply chains goes up, inflation goes up. Strengthening supply chains and strengthen supply chains and inflation goes down. <clears throat> That's why we made fixing our supply chains to bring down inflation a top priority. And it's working. Today, inflation is down to around 3 percent, about one third of what it was one year ago. That's nearest lowest point in over two years. This contract proves that collective bargaining works. It gives workers a seat at the table and ensures that their well-being, security, and futures are a priority. And it also gives employers the opportunity to deliver for employers by helping them attract and retain the best, most productive workers in the world. Yes, it often takes time. <clears throat> but done right, collective bargaining means everyone wins. <clears throat> workers, employers, our economy, and consumers. That's why I also want to congratulate another labor agreement, the Teamsters overwhelmingly ratified their contract with UPS last month. UPS is the largest single employer contract in all of North America, covering 340,000 workers. And thanks to that contract, those workers will see significant pay increases, improved working condition, brief relief from the heat and delivery trucks uh, by eliminating the tier system, which unfairly <laughs> paid some lower wage some drivers lower wages than others doing the same exact job. With this historic contract, our Teamsters are going to continue to deliver UPS goods across the country, <clears throat> and our supply chains will continue working the way they should. And these labor agreements build on other actions we've taken. During the pandemic, ocean carriers increased their prices as much as 1,000 percent, costing farmers, ranchers, and our economy a lot of money. Last year, I signed the Ocean Shipping Reform Act, cracking down on foreign shipping companies that were making America pay higher prices for everyday goods coming into our country. Since then, we've seen ocean shipping container rates come down to near pre-pandemic levels. And under the historic bipartisan infrastructure law, which we passed, we're making long overdue investments to upgrade our nation's railroads, highways, airports, and ports. The infrastructure law recognizes the vital role of modern, resilient infrastructure in reducing costs for American families and businesses and in creating good-paying union jobs for American workers. You know, all of this uh, progress underscores something else. You've heard me say many times, including this Labor Day, Wall Street alone didn't build this country. The middle class built the country, and unions built the middle class. American union workers are the best in the world. And they do their job on time, long-term, and at less cost over time. People are starting to understand that. That's why America's support for unions is higher than it's been in nearly 60 years. And to anyone who asks whether unions really make a difference, I urge them to read the new report from the Treasury Department, which was released last week. It's the most comprehensive ever look at the impact of unions have had on our economy. And it concludes definitively that unions raise workers' income, increase American home ownership, creating more jobs, increase retirement savings, increase access to critical benefits like sick leave and child care, and reduce inequity, and all of which strengthens our economy up and down the line. When the middle class does well, everyone does well, and the wealthy still do very, very well. Plus, even workers who aren't in unions even workers who have been laid off see benefits when unions are strong. Because unions raise standards across the workforce and industries, pushing up wages, strengthening benefits, and strengthening them for everyone. That's why I'm continuing to call on Congress to fully and finally pass the Protection of the Right to Organize Act, the PRO Act, which makes it easier for workers to organize unions and more difficult for businesses to engage in unfair practices. Let me close with this. <clears throat> we faced some pretty tough times in recent years, a pandemic that took more than a million of our friends and neighbors and our families. It was the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, <clears throat> major disruptions to critical supply chains. It wasn't long ago that 20 million people 
were out of work here in America, 20 million. But the American people and American workers didn't give up. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. Let me say that again. Today, the United States has the strongest economy in the world, the lowest inflation rate among all major economies, and 13.5 million new jobs, around 800,000 of them in manufacturing jobs. America is now one of the strongest job creation, going through one of the strongest job creation periods in our nation's history. And it's no accident. I came determined to build an economy, as I said before, from the middle out and the bottom up, because everyone does well when the middle class does well, and the wealthy do very well. And look, to invest in American workers who are the backbone of the country makes sense to me. Labor contracts we celebrate today prove that. And while I'm proud of all the steps my administration has taken to strengthen the economy, the real hero in this story are the American people. Ordinary people getting up every morning, walking out, busting their necks, believing and they're doing their work, showing up. They're the ones making this happen. And they remind us who we are. I've said it many times, and I make no apologies for it. We're the United States of America. There is nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. Think about it. Name me one major issue that we've set our mind on solving we haven't been able to do. So God bless you all. Thanks for what you did. Thanks for, and may, uh, may we continue to have this economic growth and, uh, and may God protect our troops. Thank you all so very, very much. Thank you.